Hello and welcome to the Balanced Business Dad Podcast. This podcast is just one part of the Balanced Business Dad movement. This movement provides a platform of the important pillars of life while building this council of dads to support each other as we work to balance our lives. The six pillars of life that we strive to balance are our faith, our health, our marriage, fatherhood, brotherhood, and our business. We are here to build a council of dads to celebrate wins and as well as to share the challenges of being a husband and a father and all the while working to keep our pillars in balance. The goal of the Balanced Business Dad movement is for dads to be better in all things balanced because everyone in our lives deserves it. Hello, hello, dads out there. Welcome to another episode of the Balanced Business Dad. I am your founder, Dustin Hogue, and with me always, my friend, my mentor, my senior in life, my co-host, Mr. R.J. Campbell. R.J., how are we doing today? Great. It's another wonderful day. Hope everybody out there is having a great one. And yes, I am senior. Will always be. He'll never catch up with me. The old, the yes. old guy in the room. Yes, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, welcome to another episode. Things are going phenomenal. Thank you so much. Hope you got a ton out of the last episode, and we are going to bring you packed again with another phenomenal episode. Today in the episode, we have Chris Miles, aka Benji's dad, and I cannot wait to hear a little bit about how he was coined that nickname because I'm sure there's some some fun stuff about that. But Chris is a marketer, a serial, self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur, a husband, a father, um, a blogger, which I know really nothing about. So I'm really looking forward to that because I know there's there's that that's that word out there that's one of those things that I know people are making a lot of money from and I just don't know it. So <laughs> looking so forward to this episode for me to learn because I'm ready with my notes. Uh, but Chris, welcome to the show. Let's just start with who the Chris is now and then we'll figure out how we got here and then see what the other dads can take away from you. So Chris, how are we doing? Doing okay. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Uh, this is going to be yeah. fun. I already, I already enjoy the vibes that we're getting, so I think this is going to be cool. And um, sorry, RJ, that you're the senior <laughs> here. Um, that's what could be a good or a bad. Yeah, we have got <laughs> to find older guests. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had one older than me. <laughs> well, that's something that you can hang yeah, your hat well, on. Yeah. You know, so. I lived this long. That's it. That's that's my success story. I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it, anyways i am a um my name's chris miles um i go by benji's dad because benji is my son's name um when i was thinking about a name for a company um i couldn't really think of one <laughs> and i asked my wife and she was like well, why don't you just go with benji's dad and i was like it's genius you know <laughs> so i went ahead with it and uh it, it actually did pretty well i'm a full-time blogger youtuber and podcast host and um, have been now for about four years and uh, wow. actually a little longer than four years, but like 100 percent, like not working a nine to five full time for about four years. So uh, it's been really fun. It's a great, you know, existence. I'm able to do the fun stuff with the family and drop off my son every single morning to school. You know, my wife picks him up because, you know, she's not working either. Um, we try to be like a entrepreneur and type family and uh it was a long road to hoe to, to, to get to this point, but uh, I can tell you it was worth every single second. That's awesome. I love that. And, you know, that is one of my favorite things to do as well is uh, I have a son and a daughter, but it's taking them to school. And mm-hmm. I never knew how important that was going to be to me. You know, my, my dad, uh, he was he always took me to school, but it was interesting. He worked a, a switch schedule, so he worked midnights. So he would go into work at 9 p.m. at night get off at 7 a.m., swing home, pick me up to take me to school, and then sleep while we were at school. But I never knew until I had my own kids how important that was that I was wanted to take my kids to school, even though it can be a little chaos getting out of the house in the morning. Yeah. Yet it's still – I look at that as a coach. I look at that. That's my number one coaching appointment of the day is how I'm able to speak into my children's lives. So I love how you mentioned that you get to take your kids to school too, because that is, it's such a blessing that entrepreneurs get if you look at it as a blessing. Love that. Yeah, no, I mean, before we, before I quit my job, I remember thinking, you know, uh, I used to work with a guy who was, uh, um, 
I think he was a consultant, right? So he was traveling all the time. I used to work for one of the big four consulting firms and he was just gone all the time from his job. And he took like a bit of a sabbatical. And when he was at home, the whole time his family was just waiting for him to leave again. And I remember thinking, oh, that is not the life that I want. And he laughed it off when he was telling me about it. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, that's not the life I want to lead <laughs> like, right. like at all. So that I, that was kind of like, you know, I didn't want to not be around. Um, I had the consideration of thinking, what if I'm around too much for my family? Right. You hear about mm-hmm. these guys who like like football players who like they'll retire and then they're home every day. And then like, oh, gosh, yeah. I need to go back to go back to <laughs> go back to work. <laughs> right. um, yeah. But I thought to myself, like, it won't be a bad thing to be around the family more. I mean, don't be don't get me wrong. You might be at each other's throats sometimes because you are so close. But I mean, that's what's going to make us stronger. And I made the decision to just, you know, let's just try and see what happens. That's so good. Yeah. It's interesting that you say it that way. Um, When somebody's gone a lot, that that's what the people focus on in their family. I never even thought about that. So, yeah, during my career, I traveled a lot, you know, sometimes three and four days a week. And looking back on it now, when you say that, I realized that. My kids, you know, they would have two questions. A, when's dad coming back? And when does dad leave? So that was always on their mind. You know, I'd get home on, you know, Thursday night, whatever, and I'd be leaving again on Monday. That would be, always be their question. So when do you leave again? When do you travel again? That should not be their focus. Yeah. It should be what you're doing. right. You know, of course, they didn't. It's not like that was every moment, but that was always the question. Hey, dad, when do you leave again? Yeah. This guy worked 300 days a year. Oh, And I was like, that's crazy to work you know to be gone on the road that much throughout the year um yeah he was at home during the sabbatical and his family was just like well you're not normally here dad (laughs) yeah it was a hard adjustment that hurts yeah yeah uh that that would be a hard adjustment i know people who've had to go through that adjustment and it was it was a challenge for the family dynamic um well awesome tell us about what uh, what a full-time blogger youtuber does so my i have a six-year-old son so i know that he doesn't watch like cartoons what i thought all kids do no he watches youtube and these other youtubers out there and i'm like these people are making money off my son watching them and i don't know how (laughs) and i was like we're gonna do this and i was like this is a lot of work but tell me about because what does a blogger and a youtuber do because uh it's such an interesting world to me Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, all right. It's funny. So funny that you mentioned that because my son actually just turned six and okay. it's the exact same thing. Like he, he, he doesn't, like you say, doesn't really watch cartoons. He, I mean, he Maybe Netflix or something. You'll find a show on there. But yeah. for the most part, it's YouTube. And the one he's really into right now is uh, a com- uh, these two guys that are just silly and they're called Lanky Box. I don't know if you ever heard of them. I haven't heard of that one. Well, anyway they have merch and their merch is kind of pricey, you know, but you get so engulfed in keeping up with the guys and watching them and they, they do funny stuff and they make little cartoons and everything. And I've watched them and did some research on them and see, okay, they're not terrible guys, you know, kind of a thing. Right. So to make right. sure that they're not anything crazy and I'll sit there and watch it with them and I'll be laughing sometimes with those yeah. from what the guys are saying. But, um, it's not, you know, that they monetize in a, a number of ways, right? So mm-hmm. now this is just YouTube specifically, not really blogging. But with YouTube, you know, they have ad revenue, number one. So they yeah. make money based on display ads. And th- I think this these guys have like five, six million subscribers. So they do pretty good uh, uh, in, in creating the content. Every episode they drop gets millions of views just from, you know, kids like him. Um but the thing is, you can't really, you know, how how much can you really monetize with that? Because kids don't have credit cards, right? So uh, <laughs> they do the merch and then they just hope that the kids just, um, you know, annoy their parents enough to go buy them something. So um, I got him one of the little characters like 30 bucks later, you know, and <laughs> gave it to him. But the thing is, because I am a, uh, uh, I do do YouTube videos as well. They're creating the content for free. Like, I don't pay anything to watch YouTube, right? So me buying their merch is supporting them to continue creating more content. Sure. So it is a little bit of a of a, a mindset shift that you have to make that, okay, yeah, it's a little pricey. It's a little overpriced for what it is that they're doing, but you're doing it to support them for all of the free content that they have given you. So that's the way that I kind of look at it. But that's how they possibly mainly monetize is through um, ads from running on their stuff, the merch that they have, the merchandise that they sell, as well as um, 
uh, sponsorships that they might get from other things. Sure. Guy, one of the guys has like purple hair and he always talks about how he uses this brand, yada, 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 whatever to make his hair purple. So he's partnered with them and they pay him to make the videos. So you can do pretty well, you know, like these guys are millionaires and they're like in yeah. their early twenties, which is annoying, yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those things. yeah. So, uh, I figure, so, you know, what? I got to get into this and, you know, I've been on YouTube now for about, four years yeah about four years so so what i've heard about it and it sounds like because you're kind of saying the same thing it's all about content so where does i mean do you have a niche of what you're putting out there are you do you do content for other people what what does content mean and look like in that world because i'm so yeah so there's there's an old marketing phrase out there that says uh the riches are in the niches right yes so you have to create content about one thing if you try to create content for everybody you end up talking to nobody right so you need to talk to one specific group of people. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of the f- favorite things that me and my wife like to do sometimes when we get some downtime is watch the TV show Chopped, right? So we're mm-hmm. watching Chopped on Food Network and, you know, she, my wife is like a wow, like awesome chef, right? You, she, she's pretty good at it. Um, and she'll watch that and have all types of cool ideas and yada, yada, yada. So we're watching the show and you would just imagine, you know, when it goes on commercial, what kind of commercials do you see? You know, you see knives, other food things, sure, or, you know, yeah. all that fun stuff. It would look kind of weird if, you know, I'm watching Chopped and then, you know, a politician shows up and tells me to vote for him. You know, that's that's kind of weird. Right. You know, that's not I didn't tune to the Food Network to talk about politics. I tuned to the Food Network to talk about food, you know, so that could tell you how that's kind of jarring if that's the case. Right. So because it's jarring it's jarring because it just it doesn't make sense it doesn't fit you're not supposed to be here and that's why it's important to stay niche to stay right there on topic with whatever it is you have to talk about so when i create blogs i talk about one specific thing so for example I'm, right now i'm working on a golf blog so i have a golf blog where all i talk about is golf right and it's awesome because now i can write off going to going to play golf but uh, other than that you know um in the past i've had a coffee blog and i just talked about coffee uh i've had essential oils blog i have an automotive blog i just purchased that i'm going to be working on as well you know so you keep it nice and to the point because that's what's going to give google an indication as to what your content is about and this type of thing works pretty much everywhere, right? Not just Google search, but it also works on YouTube. It also works on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. You don't want to talk about everything because you're going to end up talking to nobody. You know, that's like e-entertainment news. You have to be nice and general and broad in order to really, you know, bring in the masses. But then what do you market to a broad audience? You know, and a VPN, maybe, you know, something that everybody right, needs. Right. Um, right. But I have to be very specific on my golf blog. So but because I am specific, I know what I can market to them to generate revenue, you know, and that's really where uh, you get the content ideas from is you get very niche. Um, I used to say, if you have a hard time coming up with content to, to talk about or write about in your business, whatever it is that you're creating content for, you're not right. niche enough. You're not niche enough. And that's really uh, uh, what you have to focus on when building a I brand. Love it. Yeah, we've heard that before. Wow, people, that's interesting. Yeah, that's the riches are in the niches. So I heard something you said there, and I that caught my attention. You purchased a blog. Oh yeah. So so I, I I'm not even I'm not going to make any assumptions. I'm just going to ask you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, that's a great <laughs> question, RJ. Um, to be honest, uh, it's an aspect of the industry of blogging that I didn't even know existed until like after a year of blogging. (laughs) So what it is, is, okay, so a blog is an asset that generates revenue if you build it right. You know, so if you build it correct way, you get it to the point to where it's getting traffic from Google and it's all also generating revenue because of that, you can buy it and sell it like a corner store, you know, or a franchise or whatever, right? Because you are, uh, uh, make it's making money. So because you can buy and sell these, these businesses, these these business assets, um, they are sold at a pretty interesting multiple, you know, just like any business would be. So uh, if a website makes, um, let's just say a thousand dollars a month, right? You get a website up to a thousand dollars a month. A common multiple for websites nowadays is anywhere between 30x and 50x 
how much money that site makes per month. So a site that makes $1,000 a month is worth anywhere from thirty to $50,000, depending on if it's on an uptrend or downtrend or whatever. I don't yeah. want to get too into yeah. the weeds of it, but that's essentially what it is. That makes, yeah. and it's three to five years is how we would look at it in the business yeah. world. Yeah, exactly. Three yeah. to five, right. And yeah. usually sometimes people will consider it like, a 2x multiple when they're talking about the years, two or three X. So it's gone up. And when I, you know, when I first got into this, it was around 25 or so X multiple. So, and that's per month, you know? And, uh, but over time, over the last five or six years, it just keeps going up and up and up. And uh, I think a lot of that is due to uh, inflation and Google's getting better as well at um, being able to surface content and be consistent. Uh, Google traffic that you get to your website literally is the most consistent traffic on the planet and it has been for over probably 15 years and you know since the the dot-com boom when they came you know back in late what 2008 2009 mm-hmm. whenever that was um mm-hmm. yeah so i mean the fact that it still sticks around and 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 works really well and is because it's so consistent you can actually at least right now you know it is risky any business is risky but you get better returns now with a website than you would the s p 500 you know and because of that, I'm sticking with that model, at least for the foreseeable wow. future. Okay, it's next stupid question. So interesting. <laughs> I assume if you're going to purchase a blog, you're purchasing a blog in an area that you have interest because you're writing the blog, right? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, depending on how systematized your business happens to be, you could technically jump into any niche itself. And as long as you know how to do keyword research, meaning knowing what topics to write on a blog that you know is going to rank and get traffic and, and revenue, then, you know, you can really jump into any niche and just kind of flip it. It's kind of similar to a uh, uh, buying and flipping houses. You know, you might be driving down the street and you see this old dilapidated house and you think, oh, I don't want that. It's not turnkey, yada, yada. But then a we- uh, um, an, an investor comes across that house and they think, oh, I can change the gutters, replace the roof and do the flooring. I could buy this house for you know, a third of what is actually worth, fix it up and then sell it for a lot more. That's essentially what I do. I built, I'm sorry, I purchased this site and the site right now only makes like 20, 30 bucks a month, but I'm going to work with it for the next six months to a year, hopefully get it up to a couple thousand a month. And then I'll be able to take a site that I might've purchased for 1500 bucks and hopefully within a year, sell it for Hopefully six figures. That's really what the idea is. But um, get it up to that point. That's a that's an outstanding investment. We're flipping, flipping blogs. blogs. Exactly yeah, Dustin, you don't have flipping tenants blogs. to deal with. Well, I, you don't have so tenants I, to deal with. Yeah, I'm a full time real estate investor, Chris. So like, I'm like, oh, oh okay. I can flip a house. I, I know how to do that. Um, wow. So I get. What does well? First of all, how does the writing skills have to be? Like, I've been. I am not a writer. I stay so far away from the word blog because it's really bad i know i'm a bad writer so i'm assuming you have to have some kind of writing skills journalist skills something to be able to do this correct uh yes and no i'm gonna actually lean more on the no side of it because you you don't have to be the greatest writer in the world that's actually the first question i Mm -hmm. usually get from people don't you have to be an amazing writer like no to be honest the type of blogging that most people think about when they hear the word blogging you know uh is you know what did i eat this morning for breakfast or I went to the gym, you know, and this is what happened when I went to the gym. Yeah. Nobody cares, you know, <laughs> with that part of stuff anymore. <laughs> so you have to create content in a certain way in order to be found on Google. We had to create helpful content. So I tell people, you don't have to be the greatest writer. You just have to be a little bit more helpful than the next person and put that into uh, uh, into content. Um, and you, you know, when you're first getting started off, maybe you have a lower budget or no budget at all, then yeah, you're going to be on the hook for, you know, creating that content early on, but it's just like a muscle. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. Um, when I first got started, I didn't think I was a great writer at all. I just put stuff out there, you know? And then once I was, went through that whole process, now I would probably consider myself a decent writer, but I write for the internet. So it's a little different, but you just get better at it the more and more that, that you do it. Now, if you're a true investor and you got money to blow, then you can pay people to do it for you as long as you're going to make more money on the other side of it, you know, in an ROI. So uh, as long as you have the processes down, um, like I would say for a brand new person, I would say at least write your first 
10, 20 articles yourself just so that you can know what you're doing. Because I'd hate for you to go out and hire a random writer and they give you trash and you don't know that it's not trash, you know, um, so or that it is trash. So uh, mm-hmm. that's what I would at least recommend. But, you know, for the most part, I have writers and I come up with the content ideas. I send it off to them. They send it back. If it's crap, I send it back to them and be like, fix this. And they, they I give them a few revisions. If they can't cut the mustard, I move on to another writer, you know, and go on from there. So um, you don't have to be the greatest writer. You just have to be a little bit more helpful than the next person. Or if you have the budget for it, just hire someone to do it for you. So it's, yeah. So Dustin, in your world, you can either paint the house yourself to save a lot of money or you contract out the painting. Yeah. In terms of an ROI, guys, it's like, Okay, so for example, I might hire someone to write an article for me. It might cost me 50 bucks, all right, to, to have that article written. So once that article is written and on my site, depending on how much traffic it gets, I could probably make the money back for that article within six to eight months. Once I've made that article, once I make that money, sometimes it's sooner, sometimes it's later. But um, I can float 50 bucks. And then after I've made that $50 back on it, every cent that that article makes from now on is pure profit. Uh, so you do that on an, a website that has 300 articles, it gets a little crazy, you know? Now, some articles aren't going to um, do as well, but you're going to have some articles that do outstandingly well. So it ends up kind of just balancing itself out. So I can take, you know, five, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 and just put it all on content and um, hiring people to write the articles for me. And as long as I can float that money for the next year, I can usually, I, I will make a pretty good return on my investment. Um, now, if I write a lot of the content myself, then obviously I won't have a ton of time because you got to write a lot of content. But right. um, I would obviously save that content cost and I'd be making a lot more money faster. So it's very similar mm-hmm. to you. Like you can either paint it yourself and save the money and have a higher you know, ROI or you can just uh, you know, hire someone else to do it. So do you have more money than time or more time than money is the question. So interesting. Man, wow. my head is Mine spinning. too. Wow. I've never, I, that's, um, that's fantastic. Well, We've never talked to a blogger. I never I, I, I know what yeah. it is, but yeah, this is so cool. I don't. But there's there's so many revenue streams you can get from the blog besides just the blog itself, correct? 100%. You know, so, yeah. you know, all of our listeners know that RJ and I have started, obviously, the Balanced Business Dad, but what's also called the Dad Up Council which is a membership for business dads, you know, and we have a lot of coaching and stuff like that inside of that, but we don't necessarily have the blog to point them to that. So I'm going to get a little bit of coaching here from Chris. (laughs) So we can have a blog (laughs) with content on here that eventually would pay us, but can also be pointing to our courses and our education and membership sites as well. So it's like a funnel into that, right? Yeah. 100%. Um, To be honest, SEO or search engine optimization is probably going to pay you the highest ROI of any other marketing effort that you can really jump into because of the nature of Google with articles. They stick a long time. You know, you create a Twitter handle and maybe you you, you tweet something and hope that someone sees it. You know, um, I think I saw somewhere that a tweet lasts 15 minutes. You know, a Facebook post might last a couple hours. Um even like a Pinterest post might add, like might last a day or two, uh, but a YouTube channel lasts for four to six months. If it's evergreen, longer. A blog post can sometimes last around two, one to two years. So you can create wow. one blog post, and if it ranks, you're probably going to be ranking for quite a while. And uh, the main ways that I usually monetize my niche websites is usually ads and affiliate marketing. So I partner with other companies to promote their products. That's what affiliate marketing is. Um, that's the primary ways that I monetize. But you know, like in your aspect, you have the coaching and you have other aspects that you can monetize as well. Now, let's just say you write a blog post and it also costs you $50 to write that blog post. But once it's out there and it's ranking and it starts to drive leads to your business, if you sold one of your coaching products, you would have probably already doubled your uh, uh, your revenue there. And that's, a, and that's assuming that they just go bare bones. They actually go, you know, right in through your funnel and end up buying everything that you have to offer. You know, you're going to have a huge return on an article that still exists and is there is going to continue bringing in more people. Uh, so, yeah, you would you most people don't like uh, SEO and stuff because it's it's a long game. 
It's nothing right. that you're going to create today and you're going to get Correct. returns tomorrow. This is something that you got to put at least six to 12 months of decent work into before you start seeing a considerable uh, uh, return. Nice. And this is, this is really fast. I mean, I've been in marketing for a long time. I have an MBA, but I sold the marketing. I've sold SEO. I've sold SEM to companies. And this is something that I, I, I've just been, I guess, ignorant about, you know, it's nothing that we ever talked to companies about selling RJ and I met selling advertising together. And it's, this is fascinating stuff. So for all the dads out there and the business dads, because again, we're the niches, we're talking to business dads. Um, this is huge. And I think it sounds to me, I, everybody needs to be leaning in because it works really for any industry. Yeah. As if you're, because we lean heavily on Google SEO, right? So right. if your audience uses Google, then SEO can work for you. You know, so it's, uh, I think Google has, I think 4 billion or so, like three and a half billion active users. It's ridiculous because mm. there's only 8 billion people on the planet, right? So, <laughs> half about, of them are on you know, uh, yeah, half <laughs> of them use Google right now. And, uh, you know, it's one of those, like, if your audience uses Google at all, then you should be creating content and throwing it on blog because you can answer common questions that are in your space for people looking for that problem. And, you know, once they're on your website because of content that you wrote, naturally they're interested at least somewhat of, and you know, you know, marketing, right? If you just have yeah. a little bit of interest in it, that's going to give us enough to try to cultivate it and turn you into a sale. Wow. So would you say it works for local service businesses as well? So we have a, a real good friend that owns a pretty large uh, lawn care business and you know, he's looking for traffic towards his business, obviously, but it's, it's locality is so important because, you know, he's not going more than 20, 25 miles away. Yeah to cut grass, that kind of thing. So does that work so, for that? Yeah. So here's the thing. So SEO, search engine optimization, it does work for, right? Because okay. you want to create a website that, you know, can target your immediate, you know, uh, lo locale. Um, yeah. However, a blog would probably be overkill for a local okay. SEO because gotcha. when you blog, you're blogging pretty much for an international audience. You know, anybody yeah. who's looking for, uh, now you can create blogs that are specific to your particular space so um i'm not sure where you guys are but if you know uh, st. What louis, city? Missouri. St. St. Louis, louis missouri st louis missouri so yeah you can try to create a blog that said a blog post that's like you know why does my grass keep growing in st louis missouri yeah i don't know how many people are actually looking <laughs> for that that's why that's where blogging kind of breaks down for local seo but for a right. website usually locally the competition isn't as fierce as it is everywhere else so usually you can create you can um what's called SEO, your website, in a way to where it does have a better chance at being found by someone who is looking for grass cutting services locally or might have a question about a particular area or something of that nature. Now, because he is in the lawn space, I grant, I know he's not a blogger or anything, but you could create a blog about lawns, you know, and about taking right. care of your of your grass and everything. And then yeah. you can use Amazon or whatever for affiliate marketing and say, this is the fertilizer we like to use. This is the, the hoe that we, or something like that. And all of a sudden that website is generating asset as a generating revenue asset on its own while you're still, you know, trying to, you know, promote services. You know, this is really stepping outside of the box, mm -hmm. but if you did find some way to, you know, capture leads, of people, regardless of where they are, as long as they're maybe in the United States, you might be able to call a local place, you know, and say, hey, why don't you go cut that grass and I'll give you X amount of money as long as you're making more money on the other side. You can do a little arbitrage right. there. So uh, that's one thing you could do. It might not be worth the effort, but sure, that, you but know, just my, just, my, my wheels are turning, basically. Yeah, <laughs> mine are too, which is a scary thought because, well, so a couple of things. First of all, this is amazing. So I have two questions. First of all, a blog versus a vlog, written word oh, versus okay. video. Does that, yeah. does that matter? Is there a difference there? What does that look like? Yeah. I mean, a vlog is what you would find on YouTube and sure. a blog is what you is written content. Um, right. As of right now, you know, I still believe that written content is important. Uh, you know, okay. some people might be like, oh, well, newspapers are dead. I'm like, they're not dead. They're just on the internet now. You know, everyone, if you read a newspaper, you're going to read it on the internet. Or you're going to read it somewhere else. But, uh, you know, I mean, the L.A. Times is still there. You know, the New right. York Times is still there. It's not that, like they're, yeah. they're folding anytime soon. They're huge, huge authoritative websites. Um, but that said, 
I think there's still going to always be um, a spot for written content because you don't always have time to scrub through a video, right? And at least in my opinion, when you watch a video, you know, especially if it's free content, they usually have their own agenda. They want you to go sign up here. They want you to go sign up for the email list. They want you to subscribe. They want you to like the video, all this fun stuff. And that takes up the first two minutes of the video. So I got to skip <laughs> through just to try to find that one little spot that I'm looking for. And Google yeah. tries to chop it up for you, but it doesn't always work out perfectly. Um, or I can just find a blog post, find that one section of the blog that I'm looking for, get the answer to my question and move on with my life. So um, right. I think there's always going to be a contingent of people who would rather read it versus always watching it. But, um, you know, Google search has been, you know, it's been pretty steady for a long, long time. Uh, and because so many people do use it, you can you know find a way to monetize it if you draw the right audience. Wow, so, that's awesome and makes so much sense. So, Chris, you mentioned, I think in your bio, so you, uh, that you're a business coach as well. Do you coach on this for people? Yeah, so I have two main businesses. One is uh, the blogging itself. So I have like a whole bunch of blogs under like an umbrella, LLC or whatever. And then um, I have the coaching side of it. So I did this, I've been doing this since 2015. And in 2018, 2019, I started showing people how to do it, you know, so uh, uh, I just kind of run both sides of the business and uh, that's what I do. So I have a website called um, bloggerevolution.com. I have the podcast. It's also called Blogger Evolution. So, you know, gratuitous plug, you know, go go check yeah, out the, the podcast. Yeah. Um, I do have a free training that you can check out over at bloggerevolution.com as well. That kind of shows you how to do this you know, stuff, stuff, step by step and really get your first blog up and running. That's making money, you know, so um, I'm definitely going to check it out. Blogger Evolution. Blogger Evolution is the podcast and bloggerevolution.com is the website. Made this. Cool. And we'll have that yeah. in the show notes we as well. Notes. RJ will make sure to put that up. Um, and one of us, and I'm going to lean on <laughs> RJ to go take that free training because um, <laughs> that is, uh, it, you know, it's something that I know that we need to do uh, what I really like. So that's my question. So you coach people how to do it. Do you also do it for people? Do you do yes. have a done for you service? Okay. I have a done for you service. Um, so you know, it's more like you know, jump on the call and and talk about it kind of, of course, thing of versus yeah. uh, you know, just just press a button here and <laughs> because of it really course, depends on what what you need as a business. But if yeah. you do have you know money that you'd like to invest in it and you do need to park it somewhere, you know, a lot of times people who are buying these high price websites because they just need somewhere to put money that's not going to lose them. Um, I did a funny thing, uh, RJ and Dustin. Um, so I have a, a, a live case study that I'm conducting on YouTube of a blog that I bought. And all intents and purposes, the blog is only per, uh, is performing marginally. It's not as great as it like as I want it to be. But even then, I took the numbers. And if I took the same money that I invested into this blog so far, which is around 15 grand, um, and I put that money into an S&P 500 index fund for the year of 2022, I would have lost 20% of that money because the S&P was, it was not a good year in 2022 for the S&P. Right. <laughs> Excuse right. me. So, but I took that same money and I invested into a website. And because of that, the website so far has generated around $4,000 total. It should need to be a little bit more than that, but around $4,000 total, um, which means if you take that four grand and then you add the... 12, the 20% I would have lost on it, on that 15%, I've actually made around $7,000 just on that revenue, or just on that website itself. Plus the, the website itself is worth about 20 grand itself. So I could sell the site for the 20 grand and keep the money I've already generated from it. And that ends up being a pretty good, I would have at that point would have doubled my money, you know, in a yeah. year's time. Uh, so you can't get those kind of returns outside of the seven to 10 average return you're going to get from index funds. Wow. My head's down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as a full-time investor, you know, you've never had no, no website has ever called you that their air conditioner's out. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> very true. That's true. No website ever. And I, I have a of properties myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I have rental uh, properties myself, so I under, I understand the whole the yeah. whole aspect right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a whole other uh, story for another day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is so cool, guys. Uh, you know, dads, I didn't know where this was going to go, but man, this this was education for all of us, especially as people in business, but also the people who aren't in business but want to do something and get out and start a side hustle, start that extra income for your families and things like this. I mean, just like Chris did, and then he went into a full time business on it. 
Um, there's a lot that we can learn from this episode, guys. So please take a listen to this again. I know I will. Um, blogging, that is that is wild. I, I love too. it. I love that this country has the ability where we can go make money if you just lean into a little bit. You know, watch some YouTube videos on it, learn it, and then go put in the work, and you can make a very good living in this country doing things that you don't have to go break your back, right? And uh, it's it's exciting. It's yeah. it's really exciting. It's not even um, limited to this country, to be honest. I yeah, mean, as long as you have an internet course, connection, yeah. you can do it. You know, Jim Rohn had an interesting quote where he says, uh, you know, getting rich in America is easy. You know, it, it yeah. just you just have to, you know, like you said, kind of pin yourself down and do something consistently yeah. for long enough. He's like, people aren't breaking down the borders to get into Poland. You know, they're, they're breaking down the borders <laughs> to get into the United States. So it makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exciting stuff, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, again, guys, bloggerevolution.com. We'll have that in the show notes. This was great. I hope you guys got just as much as I did out of this because uh, my head is spinning. And uh, my wife, when I get to see her again, I'm going to have all these ideas. And let me tell you, she's going to love them <laughs> um, because this is what I do. Uh, but guys, thank you so much. RJ, tell them where they can find us. And uh, let's close yep, it out. I could always say, guys, thank you so much for listening. The we bring you this content, you know, you know, it, it's free, it's out there, it's uh, you know, a passion project of ours, so keep it going. What we just ask, go on to Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen to your pod, this podcast, and give us a rating. That's the biggest thing you can do to help us out. Give us a rating, write a review, uh, and life is great. Uh, you can always, uh, the, yeah. the way to find us, the best is we do have a Facebook group. That is the Balanced Business Dad. So look for that on Facebook. Uh, we'll invite you in. We have over 300 dads that are doing life together on that. Uh, we have a private Facebook group. Uh, Dustin will probably talk to the dad a little bit more that we call the Dad Up Council. Uh, that includes coaching. There's a lot to it. Dustin will probably give you a little bit there. But uh, the public group, the Balanced Business Dad, a lot of conversation there. So reach out and uh, we'll invite you in. And that's the best way uh, to hear what we have going on and what we have coming up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like RJ said, we do have a, a lot of things coming up in 2023 for the balanced business dad. The, the main one is going to be the dad up council. The dad up council is where the dads do life together as business dads, where we learn things like how to blog, but we also learn how to overcome the challenges that we have as a business dad and trying to keep our lives balanced in the six pillars that we find important. You can see that, that in the show notes, how to join. We have uh, webinars once a month on what it really does for people just to help this community of dads because we all know we need it out there. Um, but guys, again, thank you so much for this episode. Chris, thank you. This was amazing. Um, never ever in my mind thought you could be flipping websites. Like that is a whole new thing that uh, has got perked my interest for sure. So guys, thanks again, and we will see you on the next episode. See you guys. Thanks, Chris.